So you've come to the point where you want to add a glass print bed to your Monoprice Mini 3D printer or any 3D printer you have that doesn't have a glass print bed. And the first thing everyone always starts with, at least for the Monoprice, it comes with a piece of uh, that white um, masking tape and you use that and it's fine and then you that wears out and you put on blue masking tape and that works for a while but you, you read that people are like I'm printing on glass and it looks great like everyone I wanted to try printing on glass um, the first thing you learn is you have to adjust the Z spacing and there's a, a little toggle switch on the inside of the case all the way to the left if you look in, in between the little gap you'll see the little switch and when that arm comes all the way down it triggers the switch and tells it when it's bottomed out. If you don't uh, put a spacer in there, it doesn't know the glass is in there. It's going to try to keep going down to that switch and then the head is going to start bottoming out. It's going to jam. So there's a couple spacers that people have already drawn. Um, there's one that I printed off first that's this small one and you have to take off the back column of the case. There's three screws on the bottom, three screws on the top. You take it off and you snap this in over the, the, uh, the black arm. And that, the thickness of it should, in theory, um, adjust it. So now it's hitting that, this um, switch plate before it's hitting the build plate. Other people have countersunk the build plate. I didn't want to do that. Um, later on, I found about another uh, 3D um, spacer you can print where you don't have to remove um, that back plate and that is this one that's got a little uh, spring handles on the back where you slide it in through that gap and it fills the space. One thing I did learn right away was this was not thick enough for the mirror I was using. Apparently, Maybe people are using thinner glass or something but I had to glue on with super glue a little piece of plastic on the bottom to make it the same thickness. So in theory, whatever, however thick your glass is, you have to make this little spacer. So when it comes to where the aluminum plate would be, it's going to now come to the, the glass plate and it's going to trigger it. So if you use really thick glass, you're going to have to beef this up. Whether you can do what I did and just glue on a piece of plastic or later on, I went into a CAD program and I took these existing drawings and I just thickened it up whatever I needed. So I needed it, you know, three millimeters thicker, so I just thickened that up and print that off. Um, so that's the first thing you learn is you're going to have to adjust that switch. Another option is people came up with a thing where you can actually lower the switch, which I didn't do either. So the quickest thing is just to print off one of these, you clip it in. Um, the next big thing is what type of glass to use. <clears throat> Everyone always talks about borosilicate glass, and the reason why is because it can withstand high temperatures. They're saying you're going to be printing with, you know, that build plate's going to be 90 degrees Celsius, and if you use regular glass, it's going to crack. Um, so you have to use this special glass. So you go on Amazon, type in borosilicate glass, and for 3D printers, it comes up 25 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is for these sheets, and. I kept reading and there was lots of different opinions. People have tried printing on everything. And a few people have said, I just print on regular glass. One person said, I print um, on mirrored glass. So I thought, you know what, how about I give that a try first? Instead of spending 25 bucks, how about I just try a piece of you know, mirrored glass? Um, so I could have gone to the dollar store and just bought a picture frame and used that. But I went to Lowe's and in the plexiglass section, you can get a 12 by 12 inch sheet of glass for two bucks. Um, but also I found in the back you can get a six pack which is what I got a six pack of 12 by 12 inch glass that's about an eighth inch thick looks like this because I figured for 10 bucks first of all it's cheaper it's half the price of the borosilicate glass second I get uh, what is it I'm gonna get possibly four pieces out of each of these sheets times six I'm gonna be getting 24 sheets for half the price um, because I figured maybe it will crack, maybe I'll break it, maybe I won't do the right cut and I've, pr I've already cut about four or five of these. It, it's nice if you get, uh, I use a glue stick to adhere it on. You can put it right on the glass and that's okay for PLA and some stuff but I use a glue stick so I can take it off and I can set up the side and I can put a fresh one on there that's nice and clean already so and I can wash a few at a time. Um, but yeah, I bought just regular mirrored glass and I cut it to size. Now the build plate is a pro it's about five and a quarter wide by six and a quarter long. But if you do that, you're going to be covering up your adjustment screws. 
So there's two things you can do. One, you can cut your glass five and a quarter, five and a quarter, and you'll be losing a little bit space on the length, but those adjustment screws will be open. Um, another thing you can do is do five and a quarter by six and a quarter, and you can put it the full size on there, but you can, um, you'll slide it forward, clamp it, adjust the screws, level the bed, slide it back, clamp it again, adjust the, you're constantly, while you're leveling the bed, you're, you're moving it. Um, that becomes a bit of a pain. So I did a, a video just previous to this one about how, to, how I cut the glass, how I scored it. So if you want, here's, here's two or three minutes on how I actually cut, made that first cut um, with this glass cutter. If you want, if you don't want to watch that, you can just skip ahead a few minutes and I'll show you specifics for this printer bed glass. Well, this is a quick lesson on how to cut glass or a mirror, which is what I have. Um, this is an eighth inch thick mirror, which is a, a standard thickness for a mirror. And the first thing you're going to need is a glass cutter. And you can get these for five bucks on Amazon. And the important part of this is it has a carbide uh, wheel on the front. And you're gonna use that wheel to score a line on the mirror to tell it where to break. Now you can't use steel, you can't use a nail or a screwdriver. Those will just slide on the surface. This will actually dig in and score a line. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is a straight edge, like a ruler. You're gonna follow that path. Um, you're gonna need some oil. This is three in one oil, but you can use olive oil or any type of oil. You just wanna get that uh, lubrication to make it slide smoothly. Um, I have pliers in case it doesn't cut cleanly. You might need to grab it and snap off a piece. And I also have glasses, safety glasses and gloves to protect uh, my hands and wrists. So here's how to do the cut. Okay, here's the glass and I already put some oil on where I'm gonna make the cut. And here's the cutter. And you can kind of see that little wheel here. I already oiled that up too. So you have to tightly hold it on the line, put it uh, in this direction here, and you press firmly and make the cut. And you can check it and see if it's scored all the way through. And if you miss a spot, like up here at the start, you can go back up and make sure you get the whole, whole uh, length of the cut. Now, the next thing is you flip it over, and this is the piece I want. So I'm going to tap on the other side. Pretty close to the line to try to uh, make sure that, that it, it's telling it where it wants to cut. And now we're going to snap it. Okay, to snap it, this is where you definitely want to wear the gloves and the safety glasses. I'm holding, here's the score line I just made, and I'm holding it right on the edge of the table. And I will kind of bounce it by applying, with applying pressure on this side. So I kind of slowly bounce it and add more and more pressure, and it snaps off just like that. So it's that easy to cut glass or a mirror, but there's one last thing. If you want to, you could take a metal file or a nail file or sandpaper, and you can actually round over some of these edges you just cut. You just lightly brush it on these edges and you'll round it over to where you can touch it and it's not going to cut you. If, if you happen to cut it and there's a little jagged edge that might um, cut someone. So you can just uh, knock those edges down and you can do the corners so it's, it's actually safe to touch and it won't cut. So what I came up with is if you cut your glass five and a quarter by six and a quarter and then you knock off the corners with a glass cutter I did the same thing on these corners. I scored them, snapped them off. I used a metal file and I rounded everything over so it's not sharp. I'm not gonna cut myself. And now I have the full build plate except for those adjustment screws. So now I can clamp it in and I don't have to constantly move it. Um, so this has been really nice. And I have a few of them, but I'm gonna do one more. I'll show you how I cut the corners. I don't know if you really care, but show you how I snap off these corners. And now you have a, a build plate that's glass. By the way, I've been using this for, I don't know, three months, probably 30, 40 prints or whatever. It has not cracked. It's not broken. I've had it up to uh, probably 70, 75 degrees Celsius on the build, uh, the, be the bed, printer bed. It hasn't cracked. If it did, so what? This is, you know, nothing. I throw it out and I have 23 more of them. Um, as opposed to if you buy borosilicate glass, people said, oh, I printed with PLA and I tried to break it off and it chipped off the glass. It's like, wow, you're out 25 bucks. Whereas these are nothing. So I'm really happy with it. When I was at Lowe's, I saw a piece of uh, marble on the clearance rack, a marble tile. And 
it was like two bucks. So I bought one of those. I'm going to try experimenting with printing on marble. And I have old uh, granite tile. We did our floor a few years ago. So I have a piece of granite I'm going to try experimenting printing on. I don't know why. Glass has been fine. I don't think it's going to be some vast improvement. Although the thickness on the marble and the granite, it's really thick. It's maybe a half inch thick or... Um, it's pretty thick, so it will retain heat. It won't fluctuate in heat. Once you get that marble or granite up to temp, it'll retain that bed temp, so that might be nice. You won't have to insulate anything. It'll really retain the heat. Although, I'll, I've already drawn it, you'll really have to beef up this spacer. Like I said, whatever thickness material you're putting down, you have to make that spacer that thick too, so it triggers that Z-axis switch at the same time. Um, so yeah, it's, it hasn't been that easy. Oh, how to attach these to the build plate. People I've seen, there's um, some part, you can 3D print little clips. I didn't really have good luck with that because you want these clips to be very low profile so they don't hit the arm when they're sliding underneath, but you want them to really hold tight. They can't just kind of be on there. Um, some people use masking tape, but I'm constantly taking it off and on. The thing I found is binder clips, but the very, very, the smallest ones you can you can clip on there. So not those big binder clips that are, I don't know, they're probably uh, an inch wide. I use these ones that are like a half inch. Um, so you clip them on there and I don't have, with the big binder clips you have to take off, you squeeze the arms and take them off. With the small ones I can clip them on there, um, two on the side, two on the back, and they don't hit anything, they don't get in the way. So that's a, that's a big plus too. Before I was using the bigger binder clips and they always hit the arm or I had to take them off, they were a pain. So now I put it on and I don't even have to think about it. I don't have to adjust it for doing the bed leveling um, since the corners are off. So this has really worked well. And like I said, I use a glue stick on this. So when it gets up to tap, I put the glue stick on, the Elmer white glue, it melts. Um, it, it kind of like goes on like a, almost like a melt, a hot butter. Um, I print, it works great. Once that, you know, three, four, five prints, it kind of gets too gummy. I just take it off and I put another one on. I'll throw it to the side. When I have a couple that are bad, I take them to the sink and I wash that off and it's spotless again and you're ready to go. So you're not constantly throwing out masking tape and things like that. So I've really liked it. It's like I said, it's kind of been a little bit of a learning curve getting the spacers right and how to clip it on there. Um, but once you have it right, when you print on glass, you get that very shiny surface and it looks really good. And it's, it's a convenience thing for me too, not having to do all that masking tape. So um, let me show you real quickly how I knock off the corners a little bit closer and how I file these edges. Like I said, I already have a couple of these made, but it's always nice to have another one. Um, so let me show you how I do the corners. So here's the glass that I use and you can see it's, like I said, five and a quarter, six and a quarter, and I knocked off these little corners here, and it's the same size as this one. And I just take a Sharpie, and I just roughly um, draw, it, it doesn't have to be right, as long as you know it's not gonna cover up those screws. And I take the glass cutter, with the wheel that I know that spins, and I score these lines. And then I take pliers, <clears throat> hold it up, snap it off and it's just that easy I take a file and I go round everything over and then I do that for all four sides and you have a, uh, a piece of glass that fits your print bed exactly and you can do your adjustments uh, another thing is here are those little spacers like I said here's where I had to glue on um, the little spacer to equal this thickness. As you can see, this this one isn't quite the thickness of my glass, so I had to glue this on to get the right thickness. Um, and here are these other ones that you can put in through the slot. But again, I printed some other ones that I have on the printer now that has a thicker edge here. So this side should be the same thickness as your glass. You can see it's mine is indifferent. And it sort of worked with this, but I had to, my adjustment screws were totally bottomed out. So by thickening up this, um, it, it gave me the full range of adjustments. So like I said, make sure this is the same thickness as your glass. You can either draw it, I'll post the uh, STL files I used for thickening this up. Um, or you can just glue on something like that. So I hope this helps you if you're thinking about adding a glass print bed to your Monoprice uh, mini printer. 
it's not that big of a deal, but there's lots of little stumbling blocks along the way, like what clips to use, um, like I said, cheap glass, the little spacer for the Z-axis, and another thing, the Z-axis on my printer, the little plug is underneath and it always comes loose and it'll bottom out on that print bed. So make sure when you're fiddling around that that plug, if you have any issues, is pushed up tight to that little switch. Um, so yeah, in another video, I'm gonna do uh, printing on this marble. This is that $2 tile of marble I got on the clearance rack at Lowe's. Um, it's got a really shiny surface. And here's some granite tiles that I had when we did a project around here. I'm gonna try um, printing on that. You know, they might have some advantages, disadvantages. You're gonna lose some height, but not much. I, I rarely get up to the top height of my printer. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Maybe it prints better on this. I, I know it'll retain heat better. Maybe it'll be worse. Maybe it won't stick. You know, um, I'll have to, like I said, adjust the Z spacing on it. So good luck and let me know if you have any more questions or things I did or little tips uh, for making and adjusting your printer to print on a glass print bed.